Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Listen, I'm glad to have you guys here on this 26th of uh, February, a uh, Friday. Well, I made a boo-boo this morning. <laughs> Did my video up. Posted it on the wrong channel. <laughs> Posted it on my Delta Report channel. Uh, but once I made the mistake, I said, heck with it, I'm leaving it. <laughs> I'm going to leave it over there. And so I'm putting a link in the description of this video so you guys can go over and watch the, the uh, market report over there, you know. But uh, anyway, I figured I'd come on and talk to you guys for a few minutes. I'm going to tell you guys what. The Fed's going to implement yield curve control. they got no other choice, in my estimation, other than to see the system tank. And I'm going to explain to you why. Markets will find fair market value. And all this baloney that they got out there right now about uh, less than 2% inflation. <laughs> Who are they kidding? <laughs> the market will find the real level of inflation. And as far as the long end, the U.S. Treasuries, they'll keep going up until they find the real rate of inflation. So I, I think the 10-year would probably go up to about 6 or 7%, and it's on its way, you know. It started about six months ago, and it's been creeping up and up and up, and, and what happens is it'll go up substantially, and then it'll fall back. And the reason why it fall back, falls back is as the Treasury yields get higher, which is tre tre treasury yields work in an inverse relationship because when the yields go higher, that means the treasury is actually falling. So it's crashing. The tre treasury yields are crashing when they go up. I know it's hard. It's very confusing. But as they go up, they become more attractive to investors. And so they'll spike up quite a little ways like they did yesterday. And they'll stop and they'll fall back because investors find them more attractive. And then what happens is when those that group of investors is all bought in, you know, and everything, then they'll start to go up again. And they would continue to go up to like 6% right now. Because it's going to keep up. The Treasury yields are trying to keep up with the rate of inflation. Now, the Treasury yields are in a war against gold and silver because they're both considered to be safe haven assets. Uh, treasuries are considered to be the world's premier safe haven asset. Now, as far as I'm concerned, they're anything but. <laughs> because you're buying, basically, buy, it's like buying shares in a defunct, bankrupt corporation. Because when a corporation's in debt to the point where they'll never be able to pay the debt back, and if you look at the United States like a corporation, then these treasuries, you know, are not so attractive, but they're considered to be the safe, world premier safe haven asset. And so as the yields go up, they become more and more attractive and, and we get a lot of buyers and then they go down a little bit then they'll go back up again. They'll shoot back up again. They're going to have to put some sort of a cap on it, the uh, Fed is, on the long end of the yield curve. So basically almost like a peg, like they're pegged. Like peg the price, so the price can't go any higher. And this is different than quantitative easing. Quantitative easing is what they use to control the short end. And they're keeping the short end at about seven tenths of one percent. Okay, and they've been keeping it there for a long time to try to spur on investment and try to get the banks to lend money at a lower rate so that it'll be more attractive to. Uh, uh, to investors, uh, they'll like open a new restaurant, for instance, or whatever, because they can get a, a, a low rate from the bank, see? And that's why they keep these overnight rates low. In this kind of environment, though, uh, you see the golden price and silver price dropping. Now, when this reversal comes, when the Fed goes steps in and starts to control the yield curve all the way up to the long end, you're going to see a reversal. Uh, and we could see the gold and silver price start to really rise. And what this is showing is significant weakness in the dollar when you're seeing the gold and silver price rising like that. It means your dollar buys less gold. It means your dollar's worth less. It means inflation. They lose control over the price of gold and silver. It's big trouble for the dollar. 
Okay, so see everything's interconnected. It's almost like a machine, you know. You got all these cogs and wheels, and one wheel turns the next wheel, and next cog, and, and so on. It's like a big machine with so many wheels and cogs on it. And this machine is starting to break down right now. And we see that in the move index. The move index is shot up to 75 overnight. Telling you guys to watch that move index. That's why I put it on my show every day. This means instability in the credit markets right now that we can't see. There's some sort of problem in the credit markets. It's very similar to the problem that happened during the repo crisis. So we got a lot going on right now within the financial system. I'm trying to stay on top of it for you guys. But uh, long and short of the story is I see a reversal coming. Uh, and it's probably, the Fed's probably got two, maybe three or four more moves up in the U.S. 10-year before they have to step in and take action. I figure somewhere around 2% will be where the Fed steps in and takes action when it crosses the 2%. Uh, right now, they're sitting back, the Fed, and you have to realize that these guys are academics. You know, they're, they're really a bunch of lawyers. They don't know as much about this and the mechanics about how it works. Uh, they have a few charts they go by and everything, but they're what's called Keynesian economics. Economics is what they are. And they're Keynesians. And, you know... <sighs> It's, it's going to end badly. This whole thing's going to end badly because they don't want to do, they really, the Fed does not want to do this yield curve control. But I see two or three more surges in the U.S. 10-year to the upside, and I see them having to do it. They're forced into doing it. Or the system's going to come unwound. And, you know, when they do that, that's going to be the big move for gold and silver. They're gonna, and this is one of the reasons they know that, and that's one of the reasons why they don't want to do it. But they're gonna be, ha they're gonna have to do it. I don't see any other way around it. They cannot withstand high interest rates on the long end of the yield curve. Complicated situation is happening right now. Uh, you know, I, I was thinking about something else. You know, uh, about. Maybe 10 years ago now, I was driving late at night, and I drove most all night, you know, heading home or whatever, you know. And uh, I remember I wasn't that bad around 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, you know. And the sun was starting to rise. I could see the sun coming up and everything. And uh, it started to get light out. And it got around 6.30 or 7 o'clock in the morning. And I never experienced anything like that before. These waves of sleepiness come over me. It was the worst. I almost felt like sticking toothpicks under my eyelids to try to keep my eyes open. I just couldn't. I couldn't. Honest to gosh, I was driving. I couldn't keep my eyes open. And, you know, I was sitting there, all my energy, and trying to, oh, my goodness, I was so sleepy. Around 7 o'clock in the morning, it hit me. I always remember that. I It was cold, you know. It was like March, you know, and the temperature was like, oh, I don't know. It must have been down below freezing Fahrenheit, you know. And I was in that warm car, that warm air hitting me, you know, and I was so, so sleepy. And I said, that's enough of this. I can't stand it. I'm going to fall asleep while I'm driving. I can't, I can't do this. I pulled the car over on the side of the road, you know. It was a big four-lane highway. I got out of the car, went around that cold, I didn't even have my coat on, went around to the front of the car, you know, and that cold air was biting at me, and I actually slapped my face three or four times, and felt that cold air, it was like taking a cold bath, you know, <laughs> and that woke me up, and got me out of that, I got back behind the wheel again, and I was okay, it, it, it pulled me out of it, you know. But uh, I'll always remember that, because I, was, I never felt so sleepy in all my life. Well, I got thinking, you know. I know Tiger Woods is in the hospital right now with severe injuries to his legs, you know. Evidently, is pinned under the wreckage of that SUV. I got thinking about that for a minute. I said to myself, it was around 7 o'clock in the morning when Tiger Woods 
and there wasn't any skid marks, there's no brake marks or nothing like that on the road that they couldn't see. And that would be consistent with somebody going off of the road at high speed and not touching the brakes or anything. Well, why wouldn't they touch the brakes? If they were asleep, they wouldn't touch the brakes. And I got thinking about that for a minute, you know, and I said to myself, well, gee, I bet you dimes to donuts that's what happened. You know? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, and I'm just theorizing about this, but maybe he fell asleep at the wheel. Because that's that time in the morning, the same time in the morning I got so sleepy that time. Crying shame. And you know, maybe that did happen with Tiger Woods, maybe it didn't. I don't know for sure. But I'll tell all you guys out there, there's a certain time in the morning when your body slows down. It's a rhythm, a sleeping rhythm. And you got to be careful if you're on the road driving that time in the morning because it happens to so many people out there that they fall asleep at the wheel. And it's the worst thing that can possibly happen to you because your car will drift off the side of the road. It'll go down in a ditch and it'll flip and roll into the, into, the, into the woods. And you'll wake up with an awful... It's an awful wake up. You can imagine. Anyway, thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe. Tell your friends out there about my channel. Hit that notification button, and we'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye-bye.